Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Eric with American Business Systems here. Looking forward to spending the next uh, few minutes with you. As you will know that we have finally arrived to talking about artificial intelligence and healthcare today. So uh, obviously, we're going to get to hear from Adam, who's just recently uh, written an article that has been published in the Billing and Coding Advantage magazine. Uh, and we're going to give you some opportunities to, to really hear from him. We're going to review his article. We're going to talk about AI and in, in healthcare in general today. So uh, we're going to give it a few seconds here because we had a ton of signups for this, as you can imagine. Uh, so we're going to give it just a little bit. But as we're seeing some folks come in, we've got Dana and Brian and Francis and Roger. Uh, let's see who else we got coming in here. Um, Alexandria, good to see you. Uh, Donald, good to see you. So folks, yeah, we're going to be getting started here in just a few more minutes. But as you are, some of you early birds are already here. If you don't mind, I'm going to switch over to the screen here real quickly. Uh, type in, find the Q&A box, type in what location, where you're calling in, um, what state that you're in. Maybe you want to include your city, you can do that. But uh, it's always good to kind of see and where everybody's coming in from this afternoon. So Obviously, we're coming in from the central part of the United States right here in Texas. So where it's starting to temperatures start to climb up and getting ready for the summer. So hopefully you're getting prepared for that as well. As you can see here again, I just flipped back over. We're going to be talking about uh, uh, artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence. And will the advancement in that put medical billers out of business? So. Uh, a lot of people have asked that question of all of us here at ABS. And so. Um, who better could we have than the person that wrote an article uh, and our CEO here, Adam Phillips. So we're going to go ahead and get started over here. We've got some more folks that are finally coming on in here. Uh, if I've never, you've never met me before, again, my name is Eric Oje. I'm here to help you through the webinar. I'll be uh, hosting this along with Adam as we go through this. As you know, most of you have been doing your due diligence here at American Business Systems. Uh, you notice that we have been over 30 years in business. Uh, obviously, Patrick and Linda started this well over 30 years ago when it, and Linda was actually asked to do some uh, medical billing for a DME company. So DME stands for Durable Medical Equipment. That's wheelchairs and oxygen and, you know, hospital beds and all that kind of stuff. So she was actually doing billing. And then it kind of took off from there. Uh, Patrick and Linda said, wow, this is pretty cool. Uh, Patrick started looking at a little bit more, and then they developed a, kind of a home-based type business because they had family and friends that were saying, hey, what are you guys doing? Can you teach us what you're doing? And then the birth of American Business Systems. And then since then, uh, Patrick has, has uh, turned over leadership to Adam. Uh, here, as you can see right here, and Adam, we'll be bringing him on in just a few seconds here. As you're also doing your due diligence, you know we have more than just the services of medical billing, which is in the iClaim EMRS platforms. Uh, and then with that, with, there's some more due diligence that you can do with these medical billing platforms and these EMR systems that we can actually help you as you're working with your doctor and kind of doing your due diligence with a potential new doctor for a client of you or viewers, finding out which of the iClaim platforms fits your doctor the best. So we've got a total of three different types of uh, versions of iClaim. Same thing with the EMRX. And our support team is actually going to help you uh, know which one's going to work best for that particular doctor. But outside of that, we have other ancillary type services that you'll be able to market to your doctor, which is everything from doctors that might need some credentialing called Credentials Now, to those that want to venture out and out step outside of medical billing, and you might want to do a little bit of dental billing. We have Dentamax there, as you can see. But we have all these different services. I don't want to take up a lot of time here about uh, going over that. So get back with your coach that you're working with here, and they'll be happy to kind of take you through that. As I mentioned, uh, Adam Phillips is going to be joining me this afternoon. He is our CEO of American Business doing uh, of Business Systems and doing a great job here. He has written several articles and books. Uh, he had an article that was posted in the Billing and Coding Advantage magazine. Uh, and then they asked him to step up and do another one. So that's pretty cool that he's been asked to do this. But he has co-authored a book with Dr. Vicki Rackner, who I'm sure will be doing an interview with Dr. Rackner here sometime in the middle of the summer. Folks, I can't believe that in a few more weeks we'll be in June. And uh, shortly after that, we'll be hitting the fall again. So I know we got kids getting out of school and 
taking a little summer break and then back at it here soon. But in between there, we'll probably end up doing another uh, interview with Dr. Vicki Ratner. But if you haven't gotten a copy of, of Adam's book, I'm sure there's might be a possibility that we might show you how to get a copy of that before the end of the, the webinar today. But he's also the founder of an organization called MRMA. Now, MRMA is, uh, stands for Medical Revenue Management Association of America. And so instead of when you become an ABS uh, business owner here, and instead of you feeling like you can carry the logo of ABS, which you wouldn't want anybody to do that, you carry the logo of MRMA. And MRMA is our large is the largest group of independent medical billing and services in the United States anyway. And it is that group, which is also has a board of directors, which Dr. Vicki Rackner is on, is the one that actually provides you your certification once you've completed your training here at American Business Systems. So you'll be able to proudly uh, display the MRMA logo and your doctors can go there to find out if, if, if you're truly verified as a certified medical revenue manager, which they'll be able to find that. And as I already mentioned, uh, Adam is a contributing editor, uh, I mean, contributing uh, author to an organization or a magazine called BC Advantage Magazine. This magazine has been around forever. Uh, and uh, he was tasked to, to kind of talk about artificial intelligence. And so uh, we're so happy to have him on today. Remember, I'm going to get over here. So Adam, if you want to pop in uh, again, folks, you're going to probably have a ton of questions as you go through today. Uh, so, Adam, it's good to see you. And man, what a what a topic. I mean, uh, you were telling me a lot of the stuff that you're keeping up with. Uh, we're even going to share uh, with the audience today a, a website that you keep up with artificial intelligence. But you've been at this and kind of studying this for quite some time. So kind of tell us, you know, what you what you've been finding. And then we're going to go through some of the articles that you sent over to me where everybody's looking at artificial intelligence and healthcare. Yeah, exactly. Thanks for having me on, Eric. I appreciate it. I'm excited to talk about AI and, and what that means for the future of healthcare. It's just kind of interesting to me that, you know, as far as our company, we have been involved in this for so long that it started out, you know, filling out paper claims on a typewriter. Um, <laughs> you know, that's actually what my mom used to do is as, as she would put these two part claims into a typewriter and fill out the claims. And then if she messed up, you know, there's this stuff called whiteout, you know, this liquid liquid paper stuff that some of you younger folks probably have no idea what I'm talking about uh, to do corrections. But we've moved in slowly into the digital world as computers started getting more advanced and they started making uh, software programs that would actually do the, the claim, the medical billing work. So we moved into that and then we, we, we transitioned from, uh, you know, the, the software that was on a hard drive on your computer. We transitioned to the cloud, whatever the cloud was brand new. And um, there was a lot of uh, kind of uncertainty about the cloud in the very beginning. And what is it? Where is it? How does it work? You know, what, what is this cloud business? Uh, and then, but we were very much on top of the cutting edge. We moved over to the cloud as soon as we heard about it. Cloud based systems are the way to go. Uh, and then now here we are with these these systems that are integrating AI into their platforms that we're going to be talking about today and, and how that's going to really advance um, people's positions that are in this industry and doing this kind of work for medical providers. And so we'll talk about the, the interplay there between humans and, and AI. I would like to ask a question real quick uh, yeah. of everyone that's in attendance today. I would love to know. Um, have you played around with AI? What tools have you have you played around with? Are you maybe using any type of AI uh, tools in your in your uh, place of work right now, um, or maybe you're just using it in your uh, your personal life? Give us some stories. Let us know what what yeah. how it's been working for you. Um, I've been playing around with it for a long time. It's very very interesting to me, and it has very very a, a lot of different applications in different ways. It's just. It's amazing, and then if you look at the, you know, the the progress chart, the the smartness of AI, you know, it's just growing, and it's just it's just ramping up like crazy. So there's no way around it, you know. It's it's right. going to be here for the foreseeable future. So how do we interact with it? How do we use it to our advantage? Yeah, you bet. I mean, Adam and I were talking about that right before we got on that some applications that we both use on uh, on some applications that have AI built inside of it and. You know, it's almost kind of like getting to the part where where we were with cell phones, you know, several years back. How did how did we live without it? 
because uh, it's obviously there's so many great applications. And, you know, I know the, the news tries to make it a little scary about some things here. Uh, even with this one here, this article that you sent over to me, Adam, from Forbes, you know, if AI harms a patient, who gets sued? And it says two thirds of doctors now view uh, Gen AI as beneficial to healthcare. But what will happen in a court uh, should AI harm a patient? <laughs> who knows? You know, almost these these are almost like you know frightening the elderly to think that they're going to lose their doctors. Yes, and that's that's definitely um, at the forefront of the the biggest question here as far as you know, is AI going to take over a lot of these jobs that billers and coders have, right. um, you know, and, and, and really, you know, this article, it, it drives home the fact that um, there is so much nuance and so much uh, potential liability involved in, in just handing things over to robotic systems and AI systems uh, to, to make some of these decisions um, I mean, I'm, I'm specifically referring to, you know, the billing and coding processes, but there are a lot of AI tools built into some of the healthcare systems that are, are used when, when doctors are treating patients. So like yeah. in the medical record systems that doctors are using now, and there's some, there's some AI tools that are really, really effective and efficient, but you don't want to rely too heavily on those systems to make you know, the final decisions for the treatment of, of patients. That's, that's where we're getting at here is because yeah. if, you've got a comp if you're relying on a computer or a robot or AI to make those final, you know, this is what we're doing. That's when you start getting into a real sticky situation because, you know, the, the, the people that are responsible for that AI, they're the ones that are responsible if something were to happen. So doctors are really, they really are hesitant to use some of these tools because of that. But it can be done correctly. It can be done in the right way. And uh, that's that's what we're here to kind of show people today. Yeah, and I think we could probably safely say, just like whether it's medical billing or whether it's patient care, you know, whenever it gets down to, you know, clinical decision making, it's still going to be left up to a, a human doctor. And, and I think that's why we're saying this here so early and we're talking about this as this article because the article does go on, look, it's it's not going to take away your human doctor. Uh, and it's the same thing here with medical billing. Med you know, AI is going to be, it's a tool. It's a tool just like anything else that we have. Uh, and it'll, I think it'll always remain that because you're going to have to have human interaction with with things there. And you sent me this chart here showing just the the size of the market where AI is actually gr growing. Now, this is not just healthcare, but this is just in general. Mm -hmm. And it, like, like you mentioned earlier, it's it's here to stay. Exactly right. This is just to drive home that we've we've got to get more familiar with AI tools and how they work and how they can assist in whatever line of work that we're in. Um, and and this is that's just that's just the chart to drive home how much yeah. money is being spent on development and AI. I mean, it's just growing okay. like crazy. So that's what. <laughs> That chart means now yeah. one of the uh there's before we get to your article and we're just sharing with the audience and those that are going to be listening to a recording wise that obviously this has hit every part of the industry in healthcare we just kind of showed you how it's impacting and possibly impact your medical provider and how they make clinical decisions but really we're here to talk about billing and coding and so one of the largest uh uh, uh you know it's not a company, but organizations out there. It's called AAPC, which all has to do with uh, the billing and coding part of everything. And and folks, if you want to get a copy of today's slides, we can certainly get you that. But uh, it, there was nothing really in this article that I could print out, but you can see there's there's that little play button. So we want you to go back out there and listen to it. But here is, they're, they're talking about it. So this is the uh, I think it's the American Academy for Professional Coders. This is what this whole organization is about how mm -hmm. AI will impact medical billing and coding. So Adam, you kind of know a little bit more about what's going on there than my, my might even be able to know. Yeah, I mean, that's a, like a podcast kind of thing that they do, I think, called The Pull. Yeah. And um, you didn't download the audio for this, right? No, you didn't. I didn't, yeah. Yeah, so we can send you a link. Uh, I think we can get you a link to this if you want to go listen to that um, that podcast, The Pulse. And they're just kind of going to be talking about what we're talking about today. but. 
you know, it just lets you know that that really every organization out there needs to be having these discussions about AI, AI and their role, you know, in the industry. Um, but uh, yeah, that would be a good one to listen to. Yeah, uh, you bet. A chance. And then a um, couple of more before we actually get to yours. And this is from uh, Tech Target, and this is from Healthpayer Intelligence. So, folks, you can see here a lot of people are talking about billing, coding, and artificial intelligence. And this one drives right up to the heart of the matter. Can AI manage high cost claims? And they go on and say, not without humans. And again, I didn't print out the entire article, but uh, it basically is saying everything that you're saying so far. Yeah, I mean, everyone on this webinar, all these articles that we're referring to, we can send you links to them. If you, you know, get back to your ABS rep and we can send you the link so you can do a little bit more deep dive if you want to. But essentially what this article is talking about is the fact that as the more complex claims start to be as far as procedures and codes and things like that, the more complex and nuanced they get, the harder it is for AI to manage those. Um, now, there are some situations where some claims are very easy and, you know, there are some um, even some doctors that have a handful of claim, uh, a handful of like diagnosis codes, for example, that they use on a regular basis. So some of those repeat claims that are very simple um, could potentially be handled, um, you know, by AI, even though someone still has to finalize it at the end of it, you know, selecting the codes and things. But but yeah, basically, that's what this is about. It becomes a very, uh, you know, tricky situation when you've got a lot of nuanced different codes and, and related to to procedures and things like that. So yeah, that, that, that article is. Yeah, and then one last one, uh, and this one's folks, if, again, if you want to get a copy of this slide deck, again, get back with your uh, business rep over here, and you can see those links are right down there at the bottom. But uh, this one talks about the future of medical billing and coding with artificial intelligence, and it basically says the future of medical billing and coding is closely tied to the advancement in artificial intelligence. And I kind of highlighted the last part. I won't read everything, but it's basically says, utilizing AI tools will be in high demand as the healthcare industry continues to embrace these technology advances. And so that's what Adam's telling you. Uh, do your due diligence. Uh, I think, you know, you mentioned earlier, Adam, that ABS was kind of ahead of the game whenever we were moving from, you know, a billing software system that you actually had to download to your computer versus having it in the cloud. Mm -hmm. And there was a big learning curve for doctors that were moving from uh, software being loaded on a computer versus being in the cloud and all this. I think we're kind of in that same transition here. So folks, if you are looking to get in this business, be ahead of the game, go out there and learn as much as you can. There's a lot of data out there, a lot of information on there. I'm sure there's podcasts, there's video, everything else that you can imagine out there, including Adam's, Adam's article. So, uh, let's get to it. And uh, this is a, a cover of the Billing and Coding Advantage magazine. And uh, we're going to get look over his article. Again, folks, I know you can't read that. Uh, but we're going to go through all the major points in each of the parts of his, his article here. Uh, but before we do that, um, I, th I see that there is a question that came in from James. You, you want to tackle that question before we jump in on anything else? Yeah, I mean, we're going to be getting into that throughout the webinar here. James is asking, how will AI actually help with the billing and ancillaries? Well, um, there are AI tools that I talk about in my article that are, what I'm mentioning in my article is really more on the doctor encounter side. So I'm talking about, um, we have a special, <coughs> excuse me, we have a software partner that has uh, AI called Ambient listening, amb ambient listening assistant. And yeah. what it does is it actually helps the doctors build their chart properly as they're doing what's called the encounter with the patient. So when they're sitting there with the patient, they can have their iPad or their laptop or whatever sitting here, listening to the conversation between the doctor and the patient. And they're simply sitting there talking to each other like they normally would and not even paying attention to the computer at all. And as they're communicating with each other, the computer is taking that information and listening and building the, the uh, what, what's called the SOAP notes. Yeah. So it's building the subjective, S means subjective, which is 
what is the patient, uh, what is the patient saying is wrong with them? Uh, it's building the objective, which is uh, what, what is the doctor observing with their own eyes and instruments? Uh, and then A stands for assessment. So then it will build the, uh, the plan, the, the assessment, like the diagnosis codes and the treatment codes that the, the system thinks are going to be necessary for this particular patient, this situation. And then P stands for plan. Um, and plan is, are we going to need to do any uh, labs or any prescriptions for any medications, uh, different things like that. Um, so that right there speeds up the whole process when it comes time to click a button to create the medical claim. And yeah. so when they create the medical claim from that AI soap note, everything is already clean and ready to go. And it's very easy to finish up that claim and process it, you know, the way that we teach you how to do. Uh, so there's tools like that. There's also tools built into the billing and coding side that, gonna, that are going to make further recommendations as far as based on what we see here uh, with what the doctor and the patient have said to each other, we recommend that you are going to need to use these codes or you know these diagnosis codes or these treatment codes or things like that. So it's, it's just a way to, to, to be faster and more efficient in your job. Yeah. So that's why it's not taking over your job because it can't make that final decision. It can't do that because there's so many different codes, medical codes for diagnosis and treatment that are changing. They're always getting updated. Um, you know, the way that, that uh, payment methods are a uh, payment. Uh, what am I trying to say? The, the payment models uh, yeah. on how doctors are, you know, needing to do different things to get paid the right amounts is always kind of changing. The government's always trying to change it up. So it's very, very difficult for AI to stay on top of all those nuanced things, but they can help you be much faster and more efficient. <laughs> so really, you know, with all that said here, Adam, as we, as your, your title of your article stands out, it says, will advancements in AI take over my job as a medical biller and, or coder? Now, obviously the folks over here are probably not doing medical billing or coding currently, but they are certainly looking to start a business in medical revenue cycle management, which fulfills everything that we're talking about here as medical billers and coders, uh, everybody's wanting to know, gosh, is this going to affect uh, my opportunity if I'm investing in myself here at ABS, you know, eventually, is this really going to go away? That's really the question that everybody has. That's right. And as you can see at the bottom of that quote there, Tools alone without humans to wield them don't produce great results. That's it's up right. to humans to get to use the tools to get something done faster, in the case of medical billing and coding, more accurately. Um, and we must be doing a good job because no one has told me about AI at all on the webinar here. Has no one used AI at all? <laughs> yeah. I would, I would love to know uh, yeah. how much you've played around with it. So anyway, type it so in the, the beginning. Chat. So the beginning of your article, so what I've done, I've taken snippets of your article. So these are all in quotations. So uh, so you start off your article by saying what AI excels at is data analyzation, analyzation and pattern detection. So you already kind of laid a little bit of that out, what's happening in a clinical note or what's called a SOAP note. Um, let's, let's maybe just... I mean, for the audience here, some people don't even may, may not what no pattern detection really might be at, at all. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it can take a look at um, an extended uh, time frame of claims, in, in this case, claims that are being processed and codes that are being used. And it, it can actually analyze and say, um, you know what, it, it seems like there's a pattern of um, may, may, maybe it would help doctors understand if they were um, maybe overcoding uh, certain yeah. claims to try to get paid a little bit more money. Or, you know, a lot of doctors actually will under what's called undercode their claims just because they want to um, maybe try to not get in trouble with Medicare and all that. And they think that that's a good way to do that. Um, but actually, that could trigger a Medicare audit as well, undercoding. Yeah. And so pattern detection is an AI system would be able to say, you know, hey, doc, you've been using the same code over and over and over and over. And, you know, it doesn't make sense for these particular situations that you've been doing that. And so it could let a doctor know. And that's something that could be built in on the coding, billing and coding side on the platform. Um, 
to help just make recommendations to doctors on, hey, you really need to, it sounds like you're just going through the motions here, doc. You know, you really yeah. need to make sure that you're using the, the proper code for every single uh, patient, every single procedure. So that's kind of what that does. Well, you, you know, uh, you and I were talking about, we use one platform and people might know what it is called Grammarly. And I've got it loaded in my computer and whether it goes into my emails or a letter that I'm writing or anything else. And it actually helps me, you know, spruce up my, my sentence here or it's checking grammar or, it's, you know, it's checking, making sure I got the quotation marks in the right spot and everything else. Like imagine that happening for a doctor that in, instead of their notes just being kind of like a cookie cutter, because that's really what was happening with uh, the EMR systems is that uh, whenever they would be audited, because every doctor goes through some type of audit, whether it's through Medicare or one of the other commercial plans out there, uh, and you know they would come back and go, hey, doctor, it looks like all of your notes are exactly the same. Mm -hmm. This is what Adam's saying. Something like with AI can take it and do this data analyzation and some of these pattern detections and then help recreate those notes to where it doesn't look so much like a cookie cutter. And it's also gonna keep up with the time. So the doctors will know exactly what codes, uh, the procedure codes to bill for to know that they are gonna stay within where they need to be on uh, uh, the, the money reimbursements back for, for insurance. So that's exactly what Adam was talking about. So. Again, I hope everybody's starting to see here, uh, all this is going to do is improve. And hopefully, Adam, I would think as a medical revenue cycle management company, help the doctor get more money. Yep. That's the whole, that's the goal. Yeah. You go in with, uh, as with the case of medical billing and coding, uh, this critical function of most medical practices requires impeccable accuracy. What AI can now do is quickly look at the chart notes, determine what codes should be used for in each patient encounter. And but folks, that's exactly what we're we're all talking about here. Uh, let me just uh, pause here real quickly, Adam, and, and you can kind of think about um, some other aspects of it as we go through it. But folks, remember, if you got any questions, shoot us over some questions. We'll see what we can do to help answer. You may not even know what to ask. So maybe we'll know a little bit more, but... Uh, are, are we starting to see, you think, as time goes on, that more and more of the AI that's are, kind of already built in with some of the EMR systems or some of the um, the billing systems, it's already going to probably have, already have that built inside of it as we go, keep going forward. Very much. I mean, there there are there are definitely companies that are trying to play catch up on that. Yeah. Luckily, the, the, the companies that we are partnered with have already into, uh, integrated AI platforms and systems into uh, their, their processes and things. And so uh, we're just we're just staying on top of it. And it's great. And it's what's really great is it's, it's like they're not they're not just jumping head first into this and like making everything be AI. It's like rolling out bits and pieces of AI and and testing it on the uh, the charting with the doctors and testing it in the, um, you know, I mean, essentially uh, the denial defender is essentially an AI that we have, you know, yes. it's a, it's a, it's a series of AI algorithms, you know, that, that scrub our, our medical claims and make sure that they're impeccable before they're sent in to the insurance company. So just, just putting it in here and there instead of it, you know, just trying to, trying to make it take over the whole thing. So so do you think there's going to be a learning curve more? Do you think maybe on the doctor side versus the medical billing side of, you know, companies like what we have here with ABS? I mean, my opinion is, is that yeah. uh, my opinion is that doctors are going to actually take a little bit longer to be yeah. comfortable with it. Um, I think people on the back end, the billers, the coders, front office, things like that, they're going to be a lot more willing to explore and try to get it try to use the tools because it's just going to make their jobs that much easier and more efficient and faster and, and, and all that good stuff. So doctors seem to be, uh, you know, I, I guess it just depends on the doctor and, and it depends on the tool, you know, but um, they're, they're getting there. They're getting there. I mean, a lot of them, this is the same question that we had whenever they were trying to get doctors to go from paper charts to electronic charts. Right. I, it was yeah. the same question. Like, are doctors really going to want to adopt, you know, electronic? And there were so there were a lot of doctors that fought that forever. Yes. You know, they're like, I don't want to use a computer. I don't want to use an iPad. I don't want to do this, that, and the other. And 
the government kind of forced them slowly to do that by reducing their uh, their Medicare payments. Uh, but now it's pretty rare. I mean, you'll still find doctors that are using paper, but it's pretty rare, you know. So it's it's headed that same direction with AI. It's just going to take a little bit, you know, for them to adapt and adopt. So someone just typed in, does ABS have a system for prior authorizations? And if so, uh, is there any AI capabilities for this? That is an excellent question. And that is something that is still one of the most uh, painful parts of the yeah. whole process of of, of billing and coding and, and getting, the, getting, the, getting the service performed for the patient is, uh, for those of you that don't know, there are a lot of situations where before a doctor can perform some, something for a patient, a procedure of some sort, they, they have to actually call the insurance company and get prior authorization for, from the insurance company to make sure that they're going to cover that procedure. And that process is, can be very painful. And a lot of, a lot of it depends on uh, the effectiveness of the insurance company in question. I mean, some of them make it easier than others to do that prior authorization, but my, in my experience, I mean, let me know what you, what you think about it, Eric, but I, I have seen that they're still really kind of struggling with that. And, and a lot of times it still has to be a phone call. If, if the insurance company is not set up to have it done through the system electronically somehow, it's some, it, a lot of times it still has to be a phone call. Have you seen any improvements on that? On not, your... not yet. Uh, I, I do know, you know, being in both both sides of on the medical side and then on the clinical side of it, that I, I know that uh, many doctors and many clinics struggle still at the first part of the year. So, you know, for people that are listening, you know, the first part of the year for a doctor's office is some of the most critical months of the year because, Someone may start off with the Medicare card or they've got a Medicare Advantage plan, but they chose a new one at the end of the year. But when they come to the office, guess what they had? They still have the old card. Mm -hmm. So guess what happens? The, 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 the doctor, uh, their office staff or whoever is doing their medical billing uh, is inputting and you know, getting that claim out. But just to find out, you know, three to four weeks later that it's denied because they're not no longer with that insurance company. Yeah, and so, you know, I don't know if AI will ever catch up to that part of it because that's such a a, a task that you, you just need to have a, a human intervention with. Because I mean, it's not going to be uh, artificial intelligence calling up, you know, Mrs. Smith and saying, "Hey, uh, we noticed that your card is no longer working. Can you give us your brand new card?" There's just so much there, Adam, that I think is going to be so critical that, but you, you and I know both know, even what happened early on with electronic medical record systems that, you know, people always swing it too far to one side and then it kind of feels like it kind of settles back in. But I think ABS has been very good about seeing where technology is going, but not push it all the way, kind of stays back and manages it, but then also is not staying behind. So there's this middle part where you got Adam and his team that are always searching and researching and, and whenever they're looking at bringing on a new ancillary service, you know, they want to prove that that ancillary service has been working. They do their, their all their due diligence. So it's the same thing here with artificial intelligence. So I think it's the fault of the insurance companies. They don't want to make it easy. The priority. No, no. Uh, now, I, I think I've read some articles recently. They're trying to do some sort of legislation to make it a lot easier than it is now. I, I've, yeah. I've seen that, but I don't know where they are in that process. But, you know, if they could make some legislation where it's like, hey, let our software systems do prior author authorization with a click of a button and contact the insurance company with AI. As soon as it's allowed to be done, you better believe we're going to do it. We're going to have it put yeah. into our systems to do that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and this is what we're talking about here. I mean, that I just popped up his another quote that Adam had here. It's, it's just unlikely that we'll completely replace humans, you know, with artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Clifford's asking, you know, are any of the insurance companies using AI? I'm sure they are. Yeah, uh, I would imagine so. Yeah, because if they're doing audits, there's that takes a human person. But if these charts are coming in electronically, why not have some type of AI system? Mm -hmm. that can quickly hit those those and do a 
an AI type audit, and but they still have to get an individual in, involved, and then they have to get back with that billing company or whoever's doing the billing for the for the doctor. Yeah, I mean, it would be able to identify, hey, this claim doesn't look right. So yeah. here, let's pull this one aside. And let's have a human verify that it's right or wrong. You know, so it, it would help the insurance companies on their side as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, are the insurance companies using, oh, it's basically, are, are insurance companies using ABS for procedure authorizations already? Adam, can you help answer that? I, I think there's some built-in things where with one of the platforms that we currently use, there are some technology that is out there that does some looking at insurance verifications. Are we still talking about prior authorizations? Yeah, it says procedure authorizations, but... I think yeah, I mean, we we have ABS owners that are assisting medical practices with prior authorizations. Yes, if that's yeah. the question. Yeah, yeah. Yes. absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, and th and there's some technology out there that helps along with that, but it's still in the end, you got to call that insurance company, and you know, well, if the doctor wants to do this procedure, they're going to allow it. So that's for sure. Yep. Uh, going on in your article, uh, this is kind of like a two part. So we got the three little dots there, kind of reminded me to go to the next slide. But uh, you say the collaboration between AI and human expertise has the potential to enhance the overall efficiency and accuracy of healthcare processes, creating a symbiotic relation between technology and skilled professionals in the field. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, 100%, but it, it starts with our training that we have here at ABS. Yeah. Yeah, so what we're driving home, if you haven't figured it out, is there is there is a place for AI tools, but you are still needed. You as a skilled professional in this field are still needed to make sure that these things are done <laughs> and finalized properly. Um, so yeah, so the training is, it starts with our training, which is... Uh, 10 90 minute modules done with a, a live instructor. Uh, and we're going to get into the entire business model and how to set up your business, how to market your business. We're going to show you all the different things we're going to do to help you get clients. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, so it's about 15 hours of training initially. Uh, and then once you graduate that, you'll actually become certified. You'll become a CMRM, Certified Medical Revenue Manager, like, like Eric mentioned. Uh, and you're ready to roll. You're ready to roll. And uh, we're going to teach you how to use the software systems. We're going to show you the AI tools, everything built in um, and, and how you're, you're really going to with, with the, all of the tools and services that you'll have available to you. You're really just going to blow your competition out of the water um, there. There's no way that the other mom and pop billing companies in your area are going to even come close to these different products and services like what you can provide. And the fact that you have these professional, very professional looking marketing materials, we give you a very professional looking website. Uh, you really are gonna stand out uh, from the competition um, with all that you can do for the doctor. You could you could be working out of your garage and the doctor would have no clue that no you were looking. <laughs> and out it of is a spare bedroom or a closet. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> out of a spare bedroom or a closet. <laughs> yeah, and like Eric said, it's a cloud-based system. All of our systems are cloud-based. So. You can access them anywhere in the world with internet on any computer, any Mac, any PC. So you can work from home. Uh, you can have other people working for you. They can work from home remotely. So it's very scalable, you know, pandemic friendly. <laughs> uh, yeah. All, all, all the benefits there. Yeah, absolutely. And, and um, you know, Adam, I know that um, you had mentioned earlier when we first started here that people ought to try to get as much information as they can about artificial intelligence. And you you shared with me a website. I'm going to pop this up there. And I know there's some questions coming in. And folks, we want to take probably the rest of the time here uh, to help answer some of your questions. But you shared this website. You want to kind of talk about what this website is and how you kind of manage you know, the news on AI? Yeah, I just ran across the site. And it's been very helpful. It's AIToolReport.com. If you guys are sitting here thinking, I don't even know where to start with AI. I mean, no one even messaged that they've used it at all. So I don't know if anyone <laughs> on here has even tried it. Um, but if you want to try to just dip your toe into the AI world, uh, you can put your email address in here on this site. 
And every, uh, you know, every day, every couple of days, they'll send you an email newsletter talking about all the different AI advancements, all the different, all of the different little tools that are out that you can do different things. And they're getting very nuanced. Like there's specifically AI tools that just do PowerPoints. You know, they help you create cool looking PowerPoints. And so you'll, you'll just be able to read about all these different little AI tools that just help you, you know, with different things throughout your, your day. So that's a good place to start. Yeah. And the great thing about it is, Adam, uh, everybody that's listening to us today, they don't even know that you and I are both AI generated today. Yeah, we are 100% virtual. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're not real people today. We, we, we plugged ourselves in and put our script in and, and here we are today. Uh, all right. <laughs> Jason's asking a question here. Is it hard for physicians to move billing companies? Uh, if it's painful for them, uh, we have to be able uh we have to be able to something that makes them want to change. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, first of all, we not all know people don't like change. So Adam, you want to kind of address that, how we, how we handle that? Yeah, that's a great question. I'm glad Jason asked that. Um, you know, for starters, there are a lot of doctors. There's still about 60, 70% of private practices that are trying to manage their billing in-house. So yeah. they've got a lot of cost tied up in that with staff, software, hardware. They're always paying a lot more money and a lot of times spending a lot more time trying to do it in their offices. So one thing that we do, the, one of the first things that we do for a doctor is do a full analysis of their practice to help them understand how much money they're spending to collect their money because they just don't realize how much they're spending. And um, I mean, literally, we... we our owners can do the work for a doctor for about half the cost uh, of what doctors pay someone in-house to do the work. And using our tools that we have, our AI tools, they can reduce their claim rejections down to less than 2%, far yeah. less than that in some cases. They can get them paid a heck of a lot faster because the claims are so clean. Uh, our doctors are getting paid in as little as seven days with our platforms. Um, so there's a lot of benefit on the front end and on the back end. And we show that to them in black and white by doing that analysis. So that's how we're able to get them to change is because it's just simply an educational process. And, and there's a whole set of steps that we take doctors through to help you market to them and help you position yourself as someone that's different than just a medical biller. You're actually going to be a full blown revenue cycle management consulting firm, which is, you know, a mouthful, but it, you're, you're going to set yourself apart so that doctors do want to work with you. So anyway. Yeah, and, I, and, and I popped up, since you've kind of addressed that, there's a couple of books that you can use that helps doctors understand why they might want to think of uh, changing uh, the new thriving medical practice. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be updated uh, maybe soon or sometime in the future that will actually include information about AI. Uh, but the content that's in it currently is just awesome where the doctors, you know, they just need to know that they're sinking and they're just drowning in everything that's going on here. Uh, so, yeah, there are a lot of different tools, as Adam said, whether it's books like what we have here to help you to get the information out there, we can uh, we, we'll do a demonstration of our software to the doctors to show them. Uh, and every time that Adam and his team pulls together another uh, service that is going to be beneficial for the doctors, you know, it, it, it just, it, it's a great benefit for the doctor to know. Well, I, I put it this way. If a doctor has a biller in-house, that person has no time to do the research that Adam and his team delivers to all the ABS business owners out there. And that's that's what keeps us ahead of everything that we do out there. Yep, that's right. So somebody finally pop, popped in, they used uh, chat GPT uh, for edits and rewrite of documents and notes, so. Oh, good, okay. Anonymous, anonymous uses chat GPT. Anonymous. I bet anonymous, anonymous is, an, is an AI. Anonymous is an AI. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Rochelle says, do you have a person on the team to help with filing taxes or to show you how to do in the, the, the do's and the don'ts? Um, not anybody on staff that's going to show you how to do it. We, we kind of point you in the direction. Adam, you got a better way to help answer that question? 
Rochelle, we don't touch taxes with a 10 foot pole. We are not tax experts by any means and we don't give any tax advice whatsoever. So you would definitely want to reach out to your local tax professional, a CPA or somebody who can help you with that. You bet. So that's just not our area of expertise because <laughs> everybody does it differently. Everybody sets up their entity differently. Uh, there's a lot of different answers to those questions. So you uh -huh. want to get to the professional, tax professional. Yeah. Uh, Adam, you've got a great question that came up there. You want to track, tackle that one? Yeah. So Jason is saying, if the physician is already using an outsourced billing company, how would we get the customer to switch to our system? Okay. So we're going that angle now. All right. So let's talk about that. First of all, you have to realize, Jason, that we don't teach you to go bang on doors. We don't teach you to go cold calling. Okay. So our methods, and if you look at our YouTube channels, we've got tons of interviews on our YouTube channel. Um, the majority of people that we interview say they got their first client through networking. So we focus very heavily on strategic partnerships with people in other industries that can be really good referral partners. Uh, we interviewed a, a licensee last week that said she had gotten clients from a power partner that she met on LinkedIn who was referring her business. Um, and so what's happening is, is you're getting these referrals and you're, you're, the reason why you're getting these referrals is because someone had already had a conversation with a doctor or office manager and they expressed uh, either frustration with their current system or interest in switching uh, to something else. Uh, maybe the doctor is doing their billing in-house and their biller quit, you know, and then and they're, they don't know what to do. And so they put you in touch with that doctor. Or maybe a doctor is complaining about, you know, not being able to see real-time reporting. Like there's a lot of billing companies that don't use cloud-based platforms and the doctors have no idea what's going on with their claims. They can't get real-time reporting. Um, they're very frustrated with that because they're like, they feel like they lose control. And, and other times they're using companies that are just outsourcing, you know, to some, you know, very, very low, low rate uh, service and, and, you're getting what you pay for. You know, you're you're getting very, very poor customer service. You're getting higher rejection rates. Claims aren't getting paid and you don't know why. Uh, so there's a lot of doctors that are really unhappy with those types of situations, non-cloud-based systems and, and all that. So there's still a lot of benefit to using our owners, you know, even if they're already using an outsourced billing company. But the whole point is like, the reason why they're talking to you in the beginning is because they already expressed interest. They already raised their hand. Yeah. So hopefully that, that helps make sense there, Jason. Yeah, no, no doubt. Yeah. You're not going to get people that are, you're having to twist their arms to, to uh, switch, switch systems, but they're, they're there to hear they're, they're, they're they need help. Yep. Uh, I'm going to share this, this, slide here so folks uh we're kind of getting to the part where we're going to start wrapping up here uh if you've got any other questions uh feel free to shoot us over a couple more questions uh while i've got you on right now uh adam you mentioned last uh, about last week we did an interview with one of our uh, business owners uh obviously we're doing an interview with you today uh and we're doing another interview that you're doing next week so uh boy the month of May has turned into the, the month we're doing a ton of interviews. So if you missed the one from last week, you, you need to be on the one that Adam's having uh, with us for, for next week. Yeah, next week we are doing another interview with one of our successful business owners, Margaret Keene, will be on here talking with us. So definitely join in next week if you can and uh, ask her questions about how she uh, built her business with our help, her medical billing business. It's going to be great. She must be doing something right, because whenever she texted me, whenever I was texting her to say, hey, you know, let us know when you can do an interview with us. And she goes, well, I'm in Hawaii right now. So whenever I get back to the office, I'll figure out whenever I can. And when she got back, she she shot us over some dates. And so here she is. So uh, she must be doing some some great things there. Yeah. Now, you want to share just any anything else uh, based upon your article or maybe where they can find the article or how they could get a copy of the article? Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you you mentioned that. So anybody on here that's uh, has an interest, um, you can go to Billing Coding Magazine, but I think you have to sign up, you know, uh, to get those those articles. Uh, but I I did copy the article as a PDF, so 
Uh, I don't know if I'm technically supposed to do that, but if you guys want a copy of that article, uh, I can send it to you as a PDF. So just reach out to your ABS rep and we can send that your way. And I even have a copy of the whole, uh, the whole magazine too, if you want. Yeah. That. Uh, yeah just there's some other great articles there too. Yeah. A bunch of good stuff in there. And this is one of many, many resources that we teach you in our training to, so that you can stay on top of everything that's going on in the industry. You always have to be learning with this business. You always have to stay on top of what's new and what's exciting and what doctors are wanting and needing. And this is one way to do that. This magazine. Yeah. 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 James says he'd love a copy. So yeah, reach out to your, your phone. Yep. People are saying, please send the PDF. So get back with your, uh, your rep that you're working with here and they'll certainly be able to do that. One last question from Brian says, uh, once we get a prospect to switch this, how easy is it for them to do that switch hardware, software, what in, what, what's all entailed in it? Good question. So, there's a lot of different answers to that. And, you know, your ABS rep that you've been chatting with can kind of go into a lot more detail. Um, I mean, it really kind of depends on if they end up using, you know, all of the bells and whistles that we have and uh, everything that we've talked about today, but they don't have to do that either. So there's certain situations where the doctor might want to keep their current medical record system because they don't want to learn something new. And so we can do some integrations there. Um, some of our owners, just use the doctor's current system to get the job done because maybe the doctor's locked into some software contract or something. But but ultimately, best practices is we do want them to switch to all of our integrated platforms. And that's another really cool thing that we do for you. So once they sign a contract with you, we actually take care of all of the training and implementation and data migrations and all that technical stuff that the practice might need, we handle that for you. We train the staff, we train the doctors, we train you, uh, we get you to a go live date. And when that go live, go live date uh, comes, comes about, we hand it back over to you to do the day-to-day -day claim processing like we teach you how to do. So that's a really, really great benefit in joining ABS is we're, we're taking care of a lot of the back-end technical stuff as well as helping you out very heavily with the upfront marketing stuff. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Now, before, before I, uh, I know you're going to have to go here pretty soon, but before you do that, why don't you talk about the 30 day money back guarantee, explain it, what it all includes and let you take the floor there. Sure. It's pretty simple. Um, we let you go through our entire training program, the 10 90 minute modules that I mentioned, and everyone is able to finish those up in less than 30 days. And so, what you can do is you can go through the entire training and then after you finish the training and seen everything about the business and how it's run, all the good, the bad and the ugly, you can say, you know what? Yeah, this is right for me. I'm going to I'm going to go for it. Or you can say, you know what? I forgot to tell my wife that I did this and I'm going to get in trouble. So I need my money back. So we can give you your money back if you need to. <laughs> That's a funny story. We actually had that happen before. <laughs> Many, many years ago, we had a guy come to us and say, I didn't talk to my wife about this and uh, she's mad at me. So I need my money back. So that's yeah. fine. So we have that in writing in our agreement. Uh, most of the time when people finish the training, they are blown away by all of the potential that's there that they didn't even realize with all the different services that we have. Um, it's really kind of mind blowing once they see all the behind the scenes stuff. So but that little safety net is there for you. So yeah. that's, that's why we do it. And again, Adam, as far as I know, ABS is still the only company that offers anything like that in franchises or business opportunities. As far as I know, I have not seen any other franchise anywhere offering offering any kind of guarantee whatsoever. So yeah, yeah, so unique, so unique, so, so unique. Well, man, hey, thanks for taking your time. Thanks for writing the article. I know that uh, when we were kind of closing out last year, you were telling me that you were getting ready to write an article, and we kept dripping marketing in that all throughout the this year, saying that we're going to interview you and. Today's finally here. We got to do it. So great, great job on that, Adam. Thank you. Uh, do you have a couple more slides here? I got to, I got to run. Yeah, I, I've got a couple of slides. I'm going to just kind of take some folks to the next step. So Adam, thanks. And we'll see you next Wednesday doing the webinar. Let me give one final thought for those yeah. of you that are going to start playing around with AI tools. Just be nice to the AI. Tell it please and thank you so that when they do take over, they'll remember that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> thanks, everybody. Thanks, Adam. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right. So for your next steps, everybody, again, uh, we've got more information to give you. We do these webinars, like I said, every Wednesday. It really is the highlight of everything that we do every week. I mean, obviously, we love talking with you. But, you know, this is the time where you get to really kind of hear just a focused topic. 
Uh, but if you want more information, we have a complete research guide that you can ask your, your rep here uh, at uh, ABS and they'll get that to you. Uh, there's also a uh, five steps of success. There's, there's So there's another PDF that you can get. So don't forget, you got some things to be asking uh, from your, your ABS rep here. Uh, remember, don't forget to ask about Adam's article from the, the Building and Coding Advantage magazine. This research guide, you want to grab that. Browse our YouTube channel. If you didn't get to watch last Wednesday's interview, go back and watch that one before you go to the next one. Uh, the the uh, person that we interviewed last week, uh, you know, she was a former chiropractor that got into business because the company that she was a chiropractor with last, you know, last, they were having some neural issues. But so she stepped away from chiropractic practicing and went into medical billing and, uh, but everybody's going to say, well, that's fine. And then Andy, she probably picked up her billing from that old billing, or her, her old business. It didn't happen that way. It took them over a year to get back uh, with her, but she did end up getting it. Uh, but it wasn't an automatic thing there. But you can go listen to that that uh, interview. Again, just go to youtube.com forward slash YBS. You can see those, those webinars there. Get a copy and a list of our ABS references. Obviously, she was on there, the one that we're going to have next week, Margaret King. We're going to be interviewing her next week. So you're going to want to talk to these people. So you can talk with the, the folks that we're showing here. There's an entire list of folks that are there. So if you see them on a, a webinar, that we've done a webinar, you go, hey, I want to talk to Jeff, or I want to talk to Margaret, or any of the other people, Tim, or uh, any of these folks that we have here. Uh, say, hey, I specifically watched that webinar. Can I get a hold of that person? And they'll they'll touch base with you. Uh, you're going to want to get, again, back with your, your rep here. If you haven't already seen a demonstration of the software, and you can see some of the slightness of what's happening in the background with artificial intelligence with some of these. Uh, so get back with your, your rep here. Schedule a Zoom meeting with them. They'll do a live demonstration. Now, what's beneficial, there's two benefits of this. One is, is that you get to see everything before you purchase here. You can kind of start to see what the software looks like, how it's run, what makes it different, why a doctor would want to switch over to this. But it's also kind of letting you know whenever it comes down time to it, it'll be our turn to help you get that doctor. So whenever your doctor says, hey, I want to see a, 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 a sample or a demonstration of your software, we're going to be the ones doing that demo. So you're going to kind of learn some things on the front end, but you also kind of learn how that's going to process through whenever you have a doctor or client, potential doctor or client, and how we'll actually conduct our demos with that particular doctor. And then you're going to want to get a hold of the purchase agreement. Uh, it's a link that gets sent to you. You'll be able to get it, download, and review the purchase agreement. It's five pages long. Uh, and you'll just go through it. If you want to share this with your attorney, someone, again, uh, obviously asked earlier about taxes. If you want to send this over to a CPA to find out if you any of your business expenses will be uh, deductible come up this next year, you can always find out all about that. And then lastly, get your funding uh, in and let's get you set up for training. We can get you set up for training as early as next week. And I promise you, it won't be an artificial intelligence trainer doing that. It'll be somebody that's live just like Adam and I were today. It's the best thing because uh, once we used to do training in a big, kind of a big classroom, there would be anywhere from 15 to sometimes it has 30 people there uh, in those trainings. Uh, everybody asking these questions, it was five days. It was eight, almost eight to nine hours a day. But folks, we've stretched it out. As, as you heard Adam say, there are 10 90-minute sessions for your training. It can probably take you less than about two weeks to complete it. And that all fits within your 30 days. So at the end of that training, if you feel like it's not for you, you can call us here at ABS and we'll, we'll arrange to get the refund back to you. So, in, But before then, go ahead and give us a call here, 866-565-8413. That's 866-565-8413 or send us an email at info at absystems.com. We'll be happy to get back in contact with you. Okay, so again, don't forget that next Wednesday we're doing another web uh, another webinar with an interview. 
Uh, I'm actually going to take out a little bit of time myself. I get to go on a little vacation myself. So Adam's going to be running that one completely by himself. So uh, you'll just miss me by one week. So if you if uh, you see see uh, over here next week and I'm not here, it's just because I'm out there chilling for a little bit. So, but uh, thanks, James. I appreciate it. Good and interesting information. He says, have a great day and a week. Uh, Rich says, thank you, gentlemen. Very informative. Glad I attended and I'll be back next week. Great. Thank you so much. And yes, yeah, somebody says, uh, <laughs> enjoy that well-deserved vacation. I uh, certainly will, James. Thank you so much. It's always our pleasure to be here with you on a Wednesday. We'll see you next Wednesday and y'all everybody have a good evening tonight. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye.